Thanks all for having me here. Uh, you have a very lovely workshop. Uh, and it's also my first time in Ankara. I'm really enjoying the city. So, we are lucky to be in, in, in this city. Uh, so, um, let me talk uh, briefly about zero knowledge, ZK snarks, and why they matter. So, uh, because uh, some of you may not be familiar with zero knowledge proofs, uh, I will start by introducing them quite shortly. And I will also introduce you to the problem of, of trusted set which is particularly interesting to me because I, I work in the security modeling of, um, uh, of ZK SNARKs. Uh, then I, I will switch to, uh, to ZK SNARKs and present them as a very practical kind of zero knowledge proofs. Uh, I will show you how ZK SNARKs are built. Uh, so, so I will talk about arithmetization, polynomial commitment schemes, and zero knowledge protocols for, uh, uh, for, for polynomials. Uh, and then I will discuss some use cases and present open problems. So let's start with a short introduction into, into zero knowledge. So here we are, we are like in a theoretical uh, computer science world, so we talk about languages and relations uh, over, over languages. So, so throughout this talk, uh, I will focus on NP relations. So we'll have some statement X and the corresponding witness W, right? And uh, we require that these two are in the relation. And so X, we say that X belongs to, to a language uh, induced by, by, by R. Okay? So um, in interactive proofs, uh, we have two parties. One called is prover, another is called the verifier. Prover gets us input x with the corresponding witness, while the verifier gets gets only the witness. Uh, sorry, the, the statement. Then they talk, they exchange messages, and messages from the verifier are called channels, and eventually in the end, the verifier needs to say, I accept or I reject the proof. And if the verifier accepts the proof, it means that it believes that X belongs to this language uh, LR. Or, in other words, it believes that there exists a witness W such that RXW holds. And of course, if, if it rejects, then the situation is, is opposite. Okay, so um, from, uh, from interactive uh, proofs, uh, we require a number of, of problems. So first of all, we require a property of completeness, which means that if an honest prover presents a proof to an honest verifier, then the, the honest verifier will always accept the proof. Okay. Then we require soundness. So, so now the situation is a bit different. We assume that our prover may be malicious and may want to cheat the verifier for him to believe that X belongs to the language, whether that's not the case. Okay? So the soundness property states that the prover should not be able, a malicious prover should not be able to convince the verifier on a false statement. And often, uh, we require a stronger property of soundness uh, called knowledge soundness. So here, uh, is here the, the, the definition states that if the prover is able to convince uh, the verifier on some statement, then not only the statement is in the language, but also the prover knows a witness. So, so uh, and knowledge is defined in a way that we have some extractor that well, extracts the, uh, the witness from, from the prover, right? So, so that the prover can, can also like show, show the witness. However, in this talk, I, I will focus on a very uh, particular uh, kind of uh, interactive proofs called zero-knowledge proofs, interactive zero-knowledge proofs. Uh, interactive zero-knowledge proofs have one more property called zero-knowledge, 
um, where we state that from the proof itself, the, the verifier should not learn about the witness entity. So, so basically, the, the, ver uh, the verifier should only learn that X belongs to a language and nothing more. Okay, so how we define zero knowledge? So we define the zero knowledge by introducing a party called simulator, here S, which has an oracle access to the verifier. Here the verifier uh, is written with, with this little star. Uh, it means that the verifier may also be malicious. So, so the, the verifier may, may cooperate with this machine adversary here, uh, which I will talk about like, in, in a minute. So, uh, so, so we introduce the simulator, okay? we give the simulator only the instance, the X, and we require from the simulator to produce a proof that would be indistinguishable from a proof uh, computed by, by this interaction of, of prover and verifier. Okay. And, and we have an adversary who is tasked to, uh, to, uh, to distinguish these two words of simulated proof and the real proof. Okay. And, and why this, uh, this makes sense? Okay, so intuition here is as follows. So if no adversary can distinguish a proof that is uh, uh, computed by prover who knows uh, instance and witness uh, and verifier, and the proof that is produced by some simulator uh, who only knows the instance, then the adversary cannot learn anything about the statement, right? Okay. It, because otherwise uh, it, it would just uh, tell uh, which proof is which because uh, well, from, from this left uh, interaction it would learn a thing about the witness and from the right it would learn, learn nothing. Uh, so, so here we also give the simulator some special properties so um, to, to make this possible to make uh, the simulator able to provide such a simulated proof, uh, we allow the, the simulator to, to rewind the, the verifier back and forth. So, so it's not that uh, the, the prover who could produce such, such a proof itself. Okay, so let, let me tell you now about trusted Because we have interactive proofs, but interactive proofs are not uh, very practical. We usually want to, to have proofs that are non-interactive. So, so the prover should be able to send, send only one message to the verifier. And this one message should be able to convince the verifier about the veracity of the state. Um, and to do that, we need to, uh, to, to get some additional assumptions. One possible assumption is to introduce trusted setup. Okay. So, we, in this case, we have more than two parties, not only prover and verifier, but we also have some part T that generates this trusted setup, which is called structure preference string, usually, which is given to both uh, the prover and the verifier. And then, the simulator, who uh, doesn't need to rewind any, any verifier because uh, now, the, the, uh, now the proof is non-interactive, doesn't get only the, the SRS, but also like a special string called the trapdoor. And this trapdoor allows the simulator to produce uh, a proof that, uh, that is in indistinguishable from, uh, from a proof um, from, from, uh, from an uh, honest, honest prover who knows not only X but also W. Okay. Um, yes, so, so, uh, so, so uh, in zero knowledge, the adversary 
uh, should not be able to, uh, to, to tell whether uh, the, the, this uh, left interaction took place or just the right interaction of the, the proof was, was uh, provided by the simulator itself. However, there is a problem with trusted set. And, and this problem is related to, to the structure that is provided to, to, to the simulator. Because every, um, every algorithm can, uh, who knows the trapdoor can produce uh, the proof without knowing the witness. And in, in most cases, it also could provide a valid proof for a false statement if, the, if it knows uh, the trapdoor. So it's super important to make sure that this T party, that the party that generates the SRS, is trusted and does not reveal the, the trapdoor to, to, to anyone. Okay. So let's, uh, let, let's think about the case when this T, the, the party that generates the SRS, is malicious. So we will consider uh, two cases. So, so in the first case, uh, T pollutes with, with the verifier, okay? So, so we have uh, innocent prover, and the, the malicious verifier that pollutes with, uh, with, with T, with this T keygen uh, part. Uh, so in that case, a T along with V try to, uh, to break a zero knowledge problem. And the problems arise here. So we require that T provides SRS to the prover and provides trapdoor uh, to the simulator. Okay? But if T cannot be trusted, how can we make sure that the trapdoor provided to the simulator is the same trapdoor that corresponds to the SRS? Uh, how, how can we be sure that the, um, uh, that the trapdoor even exists? So, fortunately, we have, uh, we have a way to, to verify that. So, so the idea, rough, rough idea here is that the prover checks whether the SRS we got is well formed, and then we use something called knowledge assumption to state that if a party produced the, this SRS, then we can extract from this party a correct trapdoor. And then, when the trapdoor is extracted, we can present this trapdoor to the simulator. Okay? So, and this is called subversion zero knowledge. We have uh, also the other side. Uh, so the collusion of the trusted, set, the trusted setup and the prover. And, and here the situation is much worse uh, because, well, as I mentioned, if a party knows a trapdoor, then it can usually uh, provide uh, acceptable proof for, for a false state. And that's exactly what a uh, prover colluding with, uh, with T wants. Right? The prover wants to break some. So, um, so, so the, the situation here, uh, we cannot uh, get a strong result here. Um, so there are two, uh, two options for us, uh, two, two usual ways of dealing with this problem. So first of all, we can use multi-party computation. So instead of having a single party that provides the trusted setup, we have a, a set of computers, set of parties, that jointly compute, uh, compute the SRS. And the security promise is that if at least one of these parties who compute the SRS uh, is honest, then, uh, then the SRS is, 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 is correct and nobody knows the corresponding. Other than that, uh, we have a notion of updatable 
um, updatable knowledge or knowledge soundness or soundness, which means that uh, the verifier can take an uh, SRS and assuming that it, it doesn't trust this particular SRS, it may update it in some uh, controlled manner and present such an updated SRS to the prover to use. So, and here, uh, the, the security guarantee is, is similar uh, if at least one of the updates done to the SRS was, were correct, then, uh, then nobody knows the corresponding. Okay, so uh, now let me get into, into ZK Snarks um, and let me show that there are like practical zero knowledge proofs for, for general. So, ZK Snark is an abbreviation for ZK stands for zero knowledge, S stands for succinct. And, and, and this is a very important property. So, and we require that the size of the proof is uh, polylogarithmic to the security parameter, but we, we can uh, skip, skip that for now. But more important, it's, it's sublinear to the size of the instance and the witness. And in practice, we can also achieve a situation where for arbitrary large computation, for millions of uh, gates of some circuit, the proof is only like three or four proof elements. Uh, N stands for, for non-interactive, and so, sorry, so three or four group elements, and so it's uh, roughly, for example, um, 2,000 bytes. So, so it's like really British. And N stands for non-interactive, and R stands for argument of knowledge. It means it's, it's a proof system which has this uh, knowledge assignment. Okay, uh, so we built the SNARK in uh, more or less two steps. Um, so first, at input we have some sort of computation which we want to represent as a bunch of polynomials because we know how to efficiently show relations between polynomials. The first step is called arithmetization, and I will get into it. So, so we go from computation to polynomials. Uh, and here I would like to talk about uh, two approaches to arithmetization. Uh, one is called R1CS, and uh, like prominent examples of, uh, of ZK scenarios in that arithmetization are Marlin, Lunar, or Vampire. Uh, the last one I'm particularly proud of because I'm one of the co-authors, and it's uh, uh, currently it has the shortest um, communication complexity from all universal and updatable ZK snarks. And on the other hand, we have air uh, or rat um, arithmetization, which is used in Plong or ZK snarks. So, so the first one represents the computation as a circuit, and the, the second one is more like uh, computation as, as a Okay, so let's go to R1CS. So, as I mentioned, uh, we, we have a circuit. It's an arithmetic circuit with uh, addition and multiplication gates. And all of these elements comes from some predefined finite field. Um, so, first step we do is we represent this circuit by a set of matrices. Or more precisely, three matrices. So we have a matrix A that represents left inputs, B that will represent right inputs, and C that represents the outputs of, uh, of, of each multiplication. And then we require that this relation, this relation holds. Since we are uh, here, uh, this multiplication is a pointwise uh, point multiplication, how do I so, uh, so what's the intuition here is that, yeah, so, so um, A represents left input, B represents right input for the multiplication gate, and C represents the, um, the, the, uh, the output. So, so we want that some 
up for all uh, left inputs, if we make a left input and we take the, 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 the right input, then the, the output is equal to, to the multiplication of, of the inputs. Right? No, nothing fancy is hidden under this formula. Uh, so we can write uh, matrices. Okay? Um, so Z stands for, for the evaluation of the gates here. Uh, and now we can go from, from, from a matrix to polynomials, because we want to show statements on polynomials. So, uh, we have this, this multiplication of, of a matrix that represents the left input with the evaluation, and we get, in the result, we have some, some, some vector. And we represent this vector as a polynomial. So, uh, the, the idea for, for the, how we compute this polynomial is very simple. We, we just uh, we take a multiplicative uh, subgroup uh, from, from efficiency reasons. You, you may have like a mental model that we take numbers from say 1 up to 5 here. And we require that, uh, that the, the polynomial that evaluates say, say this vector okay, uh, at values uh, in this group equals to the, to the, the values in this vector, right? So, so we, we treat uh, the vector or a matrix as, uh, as an evaluation of some polynomials. Uh, so we arrive with a set of, of four polynomials, right? The, the, the Z polynomial that represents the evaluation um, Z a polynomial that represents uh, this particular uh, multiplication. Z b the same for matrix b and c for, for the matrix. Okay, so what, what do we need now need to show? We need to show now that well, Z a uh, Z polynomial Z a uh, has been computed correctly. Uh, and sorry, that that should be polynomials as well. Um, so. So all these three uh, polynomials uh, have been computed correctly, and the uh, equality between these uh, this polynomials, this relation, holds. And uh, that's, uh, that's uh, our first building block, arithmetization, for, for our one series. Uh, now let me uh, go to, to another arithmetization, that is uh, error. So here we, uh, we think more of a computation uh, trace. And we will uh, represent a uh, computation trace by, by polynomials. So, so uh, we have a number of n steps of computation. And we have registers. Okay? So, so uh, we switch from, from A1 in, in, in say first register, from A1 to A2, uh, to A3, etc. And the same for B register, C register, D register. Um, so, so each step of computation, so each step, right, from going from uh, one line to another, comes with a like, constraint, uh, constraint that need to be found. So, so for example, we may require that this value a two here is equal to the multiplication of of these two guys. So we represent each row by a constraint polynomial, um, and we also represent each column. Uh, but by some polynomial fj that uh, represents the column. So, so, so for example, let, let, uh, let's... Um, uh, so, so for example, uh, this, this polynomial is, uh, is exactly the same case as in the R1CS arithmetization. We, we take the values here, in, in the first uh, column, and we use them as uh, evaluation of, of the polynomial uh, fa. And for the constraints, so let's uh, let's focus on this example. Say that we require that a two equals a one times d b. So we uh, we have uh, the columns evaluated by polynomials uh, f a and f b, uh, and we know that these values are evaluations of polynomials at omega, and these values are evaluations of polynomials at one. So what we require is that 
FA at 1, so, so this one, times FB at 1, equals FA at omega. Okay? And now we can, uh, we can define our constraint for, for the first row. So we will aim to, uh, to, to have the following. If every constraint in, uh, is fulfilled, uh, then this polynomial is zero. Right? So, so what we require here is that this polynomial zeroes for, for x equals 1. Of course, if, if, for example, somewhere down the line uh, we have, say, a k, we have a, we require that a k times b k equals a k plus one, then we can uh, put this uh, a k k here, so we can really utilize the same constant. Yeah. So, so our, our task here, and uh, this is very, very simplified, it is to show that. If all uh, CIX, so, so all these constant polynomials are zero. Okay, so now let's go from polynomials to uh, to, to zero knowledge proofs for, um, for for polynomials over a final thing. So we have these two guys as usual. So here I wrote uh, SRS in brackets. Uh, because we, we also have some very efficient zero-knowledge uh, ZK snipes that don't require SRS, so it's optional. And, and now the, the communication between the prover and the verifier goes as follows. So the so prover sends the polynomial, uh, verifier responds with some challenge, and then the, the communication continues, the, the prover constantly sends some polynomials up to some polynomial PM, and eventually the verifier checks uh, that some uh, relation of all these sent polynomials, statement, and the challenges is zero. So you say that relation. <coughs> but we are not done yet. Uh, because, as you may uh, recall, we require the, the proof to be short. And here, each of these polynomials is like super huge. It's like the size of the computation. So we need to, uh, to do better than that. We cannot send polynomials. We need to send something else. And to that end, uh, we have a polynomial uh, commitment. So, so polynomial commitment is, uh, is a cryptographic building blocks uh, that are following properties. So, so uh, we start with some setup that give us uh, a commitment key, and, and then uh, we have a commit procedure. So, so the committer here in the proof system, the prover, uh, outputs a, a, a commitment a CP to some polynomial P, which is very short. And then we have open procedure that takes uh, the polynomial, the commitment, uh, some evaluation point Z provided usually by the verifier and Y being the evaluation plan. And the open procedure outputs a, a proof uh, OP that certifies that this polynomial P uh, committed to CP equals, equals Y, etc. And of course, if we provide some proof, we also need some verification procedure uh, which, uh, which that's exactly that. Uh, checks whether the, the proof OP is a valid proof that PZ uh, equals Y. So, so we can uh, imagine the communication as follows. So, so P gets uh, commitment key and some, some polynomial as input. The verifier knows uh, commitment key. And the prover sends, uh, sends, sends the, the commitment. The verifier wants to, to know evaluation of, of the P uh, at some value Z, and the prover responds with the evaluation value and the proof for correctness of, of Y. Okay, uh, so... Um, yeah, so, so I, uh, one of the most uh, often used uh, polynomial commitment scheme is so-called polynom uh, KCG polynomial commitment scheme. Um, it, it, uh, it relies on billionaire pairings, 
And so uh, we have three groups, Juan, G2, GT. And we uh, and, and in here in this convention we, we use additive notation and we we represent uh, group elements, say G alpha as, as a brackets, and uh, yeah, we use this kind of additive notation. And we have some mapping E from G1 to uh, times G2 to GT. And the property I, I, I lost property. Uh, sorry. Uh, so, so the, the property is that if we take a from uh, from uh, g1, b from uh, g2, then it equals uh, a b from uh, from g2. Uh, and, and here, let me introduce an important building block for for KCG called q1, q2 d log assumption. So, uh, we believe that it is hard to compute. Uh, x w one and x w two for w i's that don't belong to to the index of this uh, of this group element. Right? So so we get an input this set of group elements, and then we try to compute some new related group elements, and it is uh, computationally infeasible. Okay, so uh, so in KCG, uh, the, uh, the commitment key is um, is uh, our elements one as uh, S to D. So so this uh, group element, so it's a G, G to S, G to S D, if you like. And in another group is uh, G and G to S. Uh, the the commitment phase is really simple. We just need to to output the evaluation of um, of, uh, of the polynomial at at, at x. Oh, okay, uh, one one important thing I didn't mention. Sorry for that. This s need to be secret. We we uh, uh, we rely uh, security of our scheme on the fact that no one knows knows the s. Then the opening. Is uh, it is an evaluation? Is is a evaluation of the polynomial O P uh, at point S, where O P is defined such that P uh, P S minus Y uh, is P S minus Y by S minus Z. Okay. So uh, you may see that uh, if we. Uh, don't use this S here, but we, uh, we say that it's a polynomial, not a concrete evaluation, and here also is some, some variable X, then this part will be polynomial only if uh, Y is correct evaluation of uh, X. And the, 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 the verifier exactly checks the, whether, whether OP has this particular form. Okay, so, so we, we have this picture, so, so the SNARKs uh, uh, the provers was sending some uh, some some polynomials. Now the situation is uh, a bit different. So instead of sending poly polynomials, the, the, the prover sends uh, commitments to the polynomials, um, and then uh, the verifier sends some uh, z, which is an evaluation challenge, and the prover responds with evaluation of the, the polynomials, he said, along with, with proof of openings. So now what the verifier does, he checks correctness of the openings, of course, and then he checks that the same relation, for which uh, he would check if, if he got uh, polynomials, holds, but not for polynomials, but for some polynomial evaluation. And here we use uh, schwarz siegfeld lemma, stating that, uh, well, if, informally, if z is not known to p before it computes the, these polynomials, then the probability that this evaluation is zero, while an evaluation, uh, uh, that this evaluation is zero, while f is not a zero polynomial, is negligible. Okay, so uh, so for use cases, uh, I'm short of time, so let me focus. Uh, okay, let, let me talk about the uh, traders uh, and what 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 the results are here. 
Um, so, so, um, so I think the most used uh, polynomial uh, zero knowledge SDK snarks are the following. So we have uh, Martin and Sonic. Uh, Vampire is very new, so it's not uh, deployed in practice, uh, I think, yet. Uh, we have Plomp, uh, Halo 2 in this case, Snark. Uh, Arithmetization uh, different, uh, are different. So these are R1CS related, uh, they are like air related. Um, and what, what are the trade offs between this, uh, this approach and this arithmetization? So, first of all, uh, even though all the provers work in the time n log n, we see that, uh, uh, that these two uh, schemes uh, are uh, much more efficient for the prover. However, for the verifier, it's much more, uh, <coughs> it's much more convenient to use this first so, so we have first trade. Either we have very efficient prover, or we have very efficient uh, verifier. And then uh, the big question is about the proof size. So, so here we have a very good proof size, like uh, four group elements plus two two field elements. It's uh, the state of the art currently, and it comes from the vampire paper. Here. With Plonk, we also have very good results, seven group elements plus seven field elements. But here, in this, uh, these two guys, we, we have uh, not so good. Uh, so, so Halo 2 uh, precise is, is quite large, and CK stars are better, but also it's, uh, it's much, uh, much more than, uh, than, than here. And regarding trusted setup, uh, these two schemes require trusted setup, but this no. So, so this is also like a very big um, factor whether we want to have all this hassle with, with generating trusted, trusted setup or not. Uh, if, if we like strongly require that we cannot trust anyone with providing trusted setup, uh, we should focus on this. If we allow trusted setup, we can get uh, better performance, uh, much shorter communication if we if we use these two schemes. Then uh, security assumptions. Uh, they are like, uh, so, so here we have quite strong security assumptions, while in Starks it's, uh, it's only a hash function. So it's also like, uh, if you are interested in uh, post-quantum security of cryptographic schemes, the last scheme is the only one uh, possibly secure. Okay, so, so let me talk about use case of SDK snarks. I think like one, one of the most interesting use cases is for verifiable computation. So here we have some uh, client, which is like a small machine, okay? And we, on the other hand, we have server, which is a very powerful machine. And let's say that, uh, that the client uh, picks some program key and some input to the program, X, and it wants the server to execute P on X for, 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 for him, okay? Because I like, say P may be uh, too difficult for, for client to, uh, you know, to compute itself. Mm. So, so server, thanks to ZK snars, the server can, uh, it can compute P at X, right? Because it has the required computational power, and additionally, can not only present C, uh, the client with, uh, with the result of the computation, but also can present a very short and easy to verify proof, such that C can be convinced that the computation uh, has been performed correctly. And thanks to ZK Snark, this, this, is, this, is, this is possible. Like the, the C really, need, uh, really uh, can verify uh, arbitrary large computation with, with very, very short. Hey, uh, about the theorem, I'm, I'm going to skip this. Um, so maybe let me uh, say, uh, yeah, maybe I will uh, talk about one uh, one open problem. It's a proving complexity. So, so as I mentioned, uh, all the schemes uh, are roughly n log n. Okay, the, the constants are different, but uh, but uh, the uh, the asymptotics uh, are in the moment. 
Um, and, and this is because of the interpolation, right? So, so I said that we have some tables, we have some matrices, and we interpolate the rows and our columns by, by polynomials. Uh, and to that end, we use FFT, uh, which takes n log n, uh, number of steps. And also, FFT has this unpleasant feature that is quite hard to run in parallel. Okay? So if we want, uh, the prover to be not like a single machine, but a pack of machines that jointly compute the proof. Uh, with FFT, it's, it's very hard to run. So, uh, so, so one of the big open problems is how to get away from this complexity n log n to something linear, or uh, to put other way around, how to get away from FFT. So, uh, one of the uh, recent approaches, recent result by Dan von uh, et al. is to use multivariate polynomials to represent the columns of the execution trace uh, instead of single variate polynomials. And this approach allows us to, 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 to skip the completely the interpolation, uh, interpolation uh, phase. And, and even though this, uh, and this result is called hyperbola. Mm, so even though hyperplot maybe is not um, really requires very big n to so we can see that it's uh, quicker than n log n schemes because the, the constants are like pretty big. Uh, it, it's I think a very very interesting result to, to look at uh, to um, to see what what open problems in this space are. Okay, uh, so. Um, let, let me finish with, with conclusions. Uh, so so I, I wanted to say that ZP snarks are very important building blocks uh, in, a, in a current uh, cryptographic deployment of various, uh, various schemes. And they are the first zero knowledge proofs that are uh, for, for general computation that are efficient enough to, to be run in practice. But we still have some open problems. Uh, the, the, our work here is not done. So yeah, feel free uh, to, to contribute here, and I'd be happy to take uh, questions. Okay.